Hey folks, thanks for joining me for this episode from the Embellish Pod. If you got here by chance, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. Hopefully I can be found on any podcasting platform that exists. And if you can't find me on a platform, send me an email at embellishpod at gmail.com and I'll get that taken care of. I, you can also find video versions of this podcast on YouTube. You can find all of my links on Instagram at embellishpod or TikTok with the same handle. I have a website. It is www.embellishpod.com. It's also a place to pick up these links, episode details, and more. Uh, this evening, I'm going to sit down and talk with Nick Taylor from Found North. They have a lottery running that ends at midnight Eastern time on October the 3rd. And I'm having this conversation at 8 p.m. on October the 2nd. The goal is, is to get this video turned around so you as a consumer have a little bit of an understanding of what's going on with what they're doing because they only have 4,500 bottles to sell of this. Uh, the last time that they put up a bottle for sale, it went out in 30 seconds. And so it behooves you to pay attention to what's going on here and make sure that you get over to their website and get enrolled into the lottery. So we'll have a conversation. It'll always be phenomenal. Nick is a great guest to talk to. He has an incredible passion for both the segment of the market as well as for what he's doing individually with Found North. Um, so... <laughs> So this, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you happen to be consuming this, I have Nick Taylor from Found North joining me once again. I always love talking to you. Uh, the last time we talked, I think it was like three hours. I don't have three hours this time for sure. Um, and we do have a short time frame because we're trying to talk about a release that has a little over 24 hours left to get in on the lottery. And so we're going to turn this video around super, super duper fast. But for the uninitiated, the people who haven't um, seen that episode, didn't have the fortitude to sit through three hours worth of conversation. Tell us who you are and what you guys are doing. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Nick Taylor. Um, I am the head blender and co-founder of Found North. Um, and uh, and we're just releasing our 10th batch, which is uh which is wild. Um, yeah, we launched this thing in 2021. I mean, we really started working on the whiskey in 2020, but we launched this in 2021 was when the first couple of batches came out. And uh, I, I remember, I actually remember when we made it, we made batch one and, uh, and batch two, and I poured them out of the bottle for uh, a, a friend of mine who works in the industry. And uh, he looked at the numbers and it said zero, zero, one. And he said, zero, zero. That's ambitious, you know? <laughs> so, so that's okay. All right. Well, we've made it to 10 um, and, uh, and things are going well. So, so yeah. You know, I, I was thinking that exact thing. So I have a, I have a sheet that I track my tasting notes on. Um, because I try to taste everything three times before I'll publish any sort of, uh, this is how I feel on three different days and three different sets of glassware, because oh, yeah. there's so many environmental things that can make it taste different. Right. Um, and whenever I typed it in, I was like, Oh, Oh five and Oh one Oh. And I'm like, man, they're going to go to a hundred or 999, <laughs> right? Like you can go to 999 and not impact this numbering system. And honestly, if you want to use periods at the end, you can do dot five, like a minor release. It's like, you know, <laughs> 10 dot five and, and keep that up. But um, it, it is, it is a really, really, really telling thing. Um, so, you know, found North for the folks that want the really, really in-depth version of this, um, they can go back and listen to the three hour or there's a host of other podcasts out here that have really, really good content. You're a super easy guest to have on, right? Because oh, I can ask you. a question and then you go, right? Like you know how to tell your story. <laughs> and those are the things that we all appreciate as whiskey nerds. Um, you know, it, the, the ethos of the brand started out of not making another bourbon because there's a host of bourbons out in the marketplace now, but I'm playing in this um, Canadian whiskey realm, which is a little bit different. And one highlight from the last one that I have talked about with a whole bunch of people, uh, you were the first person to sort of bring forward to me the idea that uh, rye and corn convert to alcohol in a very different way. And yes. whenever you have a Kentucky style rye, the way it converts alcohol, it's likely technically a bourbon. If you were to look at alcohol <laughs> conversion, because if you're only a 51% rye, the alcohol is going to be converted at a higher rate from the corn than the rye. So it's going to end up being more corn distillate than it is yes. rye distillate at the end. So super, super interesting. I've said that to a bunch of other people, even dis, you know people that distill and they're like, nah, shit, that makes a ton of sense. So um, <laughs> he, you, you're, you're one of the better guests. So tell me a little bit about batch 10, right? So, so batch yeah. 10 is, is the thing that's in lottery 
It has until midnight tomorrow to get into the lottery with people being drawn. Or I guess don't even tell me about batch 10. Tell me about why you have a lottery. Oh yeah. So we have a lottery because we don't have a better solution than that. Um, we, we have a lottery because when we started making whiskey, uh, you know, the hope was to make it accessible. You know, the, the, the concept of the batches was always like that, that there's a, there's an unfolding story going on that we're, we're not just recreating the same thing that each release that we do is kind of, a um, a, a, another chapter in, um, in both sort of our personal journey, making whiskey, but also we, we really, I guess I always say we, but it's, it's something that's very deeply personal to me is I've always felt a deep connection to the producers that I loved, uh, particularly when I was working, not as a producer, when I was working in the industry and I was a, really a, just a, just a fan of a lot of different whiskeys. Um, I loved going to the distilleries. I loved meeting the distillers. I loved the stories behind it. Um, and I love that feeling of connectivity to the whiskey um, as a non distilling producer as blenders um, where we're, you know, buying the whiskey, recasting it at a warehouse that we don't own. You know, it, it, there's no, there's no uh, sense of place for us. And so the sense of place is the whiskey and the sense of place is the intention behind the whiskey and the sense of places is, is our story of why we do this and, and what we're making. So, you know, the batches was really about like, hey, this is this has been the the progression of the whiskey. And as a result, the goal was always to make it so that people could try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The goal was never to make it so that we'd make, you know, forty five hundred bottles of ten and have mm -hmm. fifteen thousand people who want it. Um, that's that was never the uh, the intention behind the brand. Uh, but the problem for us is because we get asked all the time, well, why don't you just make more? Um, well, with 10, we bought the wheat and recast it. Uh, the wheat that's in batch 10, we bought that wheat two years ago. And two years ago, one, we didn't have very much money. Um, and two, we didn't have nearly as many customers. Um, and so uh, honest to God, when we, when we bought the wheat, we were – buying as deep as we could uh we were like this is this is un this is an unreasonably optimistic amount of wheat to be buying like <laughs> um, and uh and so now you know we we originally thought we were going to use it at a slightly lower proportion um it makes up 29 percent of the blend we thought it would be um in the lower 20s which again if it's the limiting factor that shrinks the batch even more, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so unfortunately we've hit a point where I say, unfortunately, it's, gr it's a great thing as a brand to sell out as a business. It's mm -hmm. good. It's much better to sell out than have your stuff sitting on shelves. There's so, you know, woe is me. If you're, if you're feeling that and, and you see me playing my tiny little violin, I, <laughs> I totally get it. Um, but it's still a problem and it's still frustrating because we really want to get this out to as many people as possible. Um, and we started really seeing a problem, um, with batch eight, but, but mostly with Peregrine when we released Peregrine, it sold out so fast and we saw it showing up on secondary market very quickly, which was flattering, um, that, that people were paying for it on auction for a lot more than we were selling it for. Um, but annoying and customers and, and fans of found North were annoyed, um, reasonably. And so we've been sort of trying to figure out how to deal with that. And, and our first, our first, uh, foray into doing a lottery was with Helldiver. Um, and we did it, we ran the whole, everything ourselves. Um, uh, so we didn't like hire lottery. So we just did the lottery, which I can't begin to tell you. Actually, I can, I, I know, you, you know, because I know your profession, you know, how arduous it is to, to go through. And I went out and I parsed the data myself um, to find duplicates and weed them out and find right. bad actors. Oh my goodness. And of course it's not perfect. Um, mm -hmm. so we did that. And then we said, okay, that's, that's too much work. And you know, batch nine, we're not going to see this happen again. And then we released batch nine and it sold out in 30 seconds. And mm -hmm. people were like, why the hell didn't you do a lottery? Um, so, We've moved to a lottery um, 
And, uh, and we signed up with a company called Equal, um, EQL, and literally all they do is weed out bots and mm -hmm. weed out multiple entrants and find bad actors and prevent credit card fraud. Like their whole business is to just do limited edition releases through a really fair lottery system. Um, mm -hmm. And the other cool thing they let you do, which we which we're really excited about is um, we've set it up. So if you don't win the lottery, it doubles your chances to win the next lottery. Um, so it basically rewards people for participating. And the, the mm -hmm. idea being that we want to get as many found North bottles out to as many people as possible in as fair way as possible, as we try to catch up with demand, which we are actually trying to do. The idea isn't like, Oh, now we've got you. And we're gonna, you know, we're gonna sell you this thing and tell you all about it. We're never gonna let you taste it. No, the, the idea is to, to to do this while we catch up. And and if someday we don't have to do a lottery system anymore, you know, hopefully it's not because our whiskey suddenly got bad. Hopefully it's because we actually caught up with right. with uh, with demand. Well, and you know, it, honestly, having to have a lottery is both good and bad, right? You, yeah. you you're covering that pretty well. Um, if you're able to sell out in 30 seconds, um, if you doubled the batch, would it still sell in 30 seconds or is it a minute, right? You're, you're trying to find the place where you can get the most impact to the most people because at the end of the day, you know, given the ethos of y'all's brand, you want people to taste it. You want people to experience yes. it. You want people to do all of these things and um, starting off with an optimistic number and that ultimately becoming way deficient in the number of uh, <laughs> bottles that you're able to offer uh, also doesn't keep you as front of mind with people. So it really behooves you to, to, to get more out yes. there and, you know, find a place where, you know, maybe it takes 12 hours to sell out a sellout's a sellout, right? Like any oh, concert sorry. that's out there, <laughs> but if you can keep expanding the venue to the point to where it takes a little longer to sell out, but more people get to experiencing it. And at the end of the day, you as a company get to make more money. So you then you can make more things in the future, right? Like and you, better whiskey. That, that's right. the, that, that's the other win, right? It's like mm -hmm. we, we, um, the more whiskey we make, that's good. The more resources we have to make mm -hmm. good whiskey. Uh, so yeah, no, you, you've yeah. got it right on the head. Yeah. And you know, it, I think about the, the I, I like the fact that this, you know, I was, I was, as you were kind of talking through the, the lottery system, doing it yourself, I was like, you know, I know there's companies out there that have to do this, but I wonder how expensive they are. And, you know, cause yeah, that's that's a lot of data to go through, and that's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> they're expensive, right? Because they're yeah. good and and yeah. and they help and they do all those things. So, um, tell me a little bit about Batch Ten. Batch Ten is um, yeah. a weeder, right? Yes. Um, you've done one before, so yes. let's let's hear about this one. <laughs> yeah, so um, we we made Batch Five, and really the idea was to make a Batch Ten uh, different and better, <laughs> um, which is. Which is uh, which is always an aspirational goal is to is to both change it and uh, and actually improve on it um, and and batch ten but batch ten still um, it's the same concept as it's really the same concept in the in the same I guess theory as batch five um, and and what that idea is for us is that um, we really like well I should say. I really like some weeded bourbons. Um, <laughs> I don't love all weeded bourbons. I really, really, I like some of them and some of them don't do it for me really at all. And I've always had this notion in my head with, um, with weeders that the, the mash bill kind of hamstrings bourbon producers when it comes to weeders, because the wheat does really well. I wouldn't say young, but at a younger age than the corn. Mm -hmm. And so when you're, when you're aging the corn to a point where the whiskey's really hitting the level of maturity that I like in whiskey, you've often kind of lost the wheat. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I, I once heard a, a, a bourbon producer say to me, um, I won't say where it was, but I had a bourbon producer say to me, uh, um, Wheat's great because it gets out of the way. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you know, rye can, it, it, it's such a bold, spicy flavor. And wheat just kind of gets out of the way. And I was like, then why do you, then why, uh, use it? 
why do you use it, you know? And, but that's what I think happens sometimes at an older age with, 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 uh, with weeded bourbons is you start to get, you start to just get away from the the sort of qualities of weeders that I really like. Uh, and, and that's textural. It's buttery. It's the creaminess of them. Uh, they can have like a kind of a leathery, minty tobacco note that's really lovely. That doesn't come with the sort of requisite bitter spice that you would get from a, from a, a, a rye uh, secondary grain as opposed to the wheat. Um, and so it, it can be really lovely. Uh, but I like my corn components to be old. I mean, really old. And when, mm-hmm. and when we're working with Canadian whiskey, um, when we don't have to put everything in new wood, a lot of times the corn components we're using have the benefits of age. They have the benefits of the oxidative reaction. They have the benefits of, of um, the, the evaporation and therefore the concentration of some of the molecules that I really like. Um, but they're not over extracted because they've spent 12 years or 14 years in ex-bourbon. And then they've spent, you know, 10 years in new American oak. And so they end up having a really good balance of wood profile and age. And that's what, I mean, that's why we release so many of these old batches where they're 18, 19 years old. We do that with our, with our batches that have rye in them because we like rye at that age as well, but we don't Mm -hmm. like wheat at that age. We like wheat at eight, nine years old. Um, And so we kind of had this, this thought, we said, well, what if we take because it's Canadian and we don't have to do a mash bill. What if we take a hundred percent wheat that's eight or nine years old and we blend it with a range of whiskeys in the, in the 20 year approximate range. Um, and it works. I mean, really well, uh, it works really well. Uh, and the downside is that we have to put an eight year age statement on it. Um, and we get that, but honestly, like, if, you, if you're really hounding on the age in here, this thing is 66% corn that's aged between 19 and 23 years old. Um, it's mostly really old whiskey, but a third of it is eight, nine years old, and we like it that way. Um, and and I, I think it's, it's, really, it's really a fun way of taking advantage of um, the Canadian production process to make something that is akin to weeded bourbon, but in, in, in our mind adds a little something different, um, at the same time. Okay. So let's, let's, let's go backwards in time a little bit. Let's go back to batch five and, yeah. um, I actually have batch five in a glass here. Oh, um, baby, so do I. And, and it's, it, it is, it is different, right? So batch five was a blend of, um, 21 year corn and eight year wheat. Right. That's yep. that's all that's in that's not it. all that. That sounds really diminutive, right? That's yeah, not what that's I'm trying it. to say. <laughs> yeah, no, um, yeah. w- well, when you look at you know batch ten as the new wheat, uh, also incorporate some barley into it as well. Yep. Right. So you know as as you're sitting out to blend this, you know obviously um, you didn't have the stocks that you have now, and yep. the stocks that you have now are still greater than what you could put into batch ten. That'll be in that's batch right. you know fifteen or twenty or twenty five. Um, Tell me about how this blend develops. Yeah, so with with batch five, batch five was um, batch five was hilarious. It took us about five minutes to make, um, mm-hmm. I, I, and and the first four batches we made took many many dozens. Um, batch three took like a hundred and fifty test blends, um, something like that. And batch one, honestly, if you count the like six months of making horrific whiskey before we started figuring out how to how to blend batch one like hundreds of test batches Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and years off of my life uh and but batch five we 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 were having this conversation and um sammy my my partner in crime on the on the blending side of things um he was the one when we were talking about wheat who said you know he, he was like nick um because he, he was less of an American whiskey guy than I was. I, I was more on the American whiskey side. He was more on the, the, the sort of um, international whiskey, scotch in particular. And he was talking to me about wheat. And he said, what's, the pro- what's your problem with wheat? You know, what's your problem with, with weeded releases? And I told him, and he said, well, we have this component that was sent to us that we have the opportunity to buy. What if we just did it, you know, 70, 30, 21-year corn, this 21-year corn that we have and, and this wheat? And it was 
immediately delicious. We were like, we could bottle this. So first test blend. And we're like, all right, well, let's try it at 75% corn, 25% wheat. And it was really delicious. And we we're like, well, let's split the difference and see if it's, if that's the best. And it was the best and we were done. Uh, it was one session. We sat there and it was like, and it was the, it's the only two whiskey batch we've ever done. And you're right. I mean, a big reason was we didn't own a lot of whiskey at the time, to be honest. Like, we just didn't have a lot. We didn't even own the wheat at the time. We, we bought the, however, you know, handful of barrels of wheat that were available to us. And we bottled this thing up and we were nervous about it because at the time found North was, we had done four batch. I mean, nobody knew who the hell found North was. And it was one thing to sell, you know, just to get into the pure economics of it. It was one thing to sell a 16, 17 year old whiskey, cash strength whiskey at 130, $140 coming out with a eight year Canadian blend at 125 bucks. Um, we had a lot of people who were like, what the hell are you doing? Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so as a result, we had to, we had to really count on it. Um, hitting the spot from a flavor standpoint for, for a lot of people. And it did, um, which was, which was great. It, it ended up just, it ended up being kind of, it was really fun to go to tastings and pour this whiskey and pour the old ones and, and people coming up to me afterwards and being like, I got to tell you batch five is my favorite. I, and, and it was always, there was <laughs> like, I hope you're not offended. You know, I'm like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not at all. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, that, that was the, that was sort of the, the, the conception of it. And as a blend, it's, um, you know, honestly, I, I think it's buttery and delicious and it has the, um, it particularly on the nose, it has the little sort of, um, uh, leathery kind of, um, I have a, I own a, a, a leather chair that mm -hmm. belonged to my grandfather you know, and it was in his house when I was growing up, it's like 35 years. And it has that just perfectly worn leather feel to it. There, yep. There's a little of that in here, which I really, which I really enjoy. And the wood profile is, is quite nice. There's the, the interestingly with this blend, it was, the corn was 13 years in new wood. And I mean, in uh, X bourbon and then eight years in new wood, it had been re-racked. Um, mm -hmm. And the, and the wheat was all in new wood. Um, and so the, the, I, I love, I love that eight to 10 years of new wood is just a, it's just a sweet spot. It's a sweet spot for bourbon, but it's really a, a sweet spot for Canadian whiskey when you're, especially with the corn, when you're, when you're giving it just some time in the barrel to, to develop mm -hmm. before you, before you introduce that wood character. Yeah. I know the, the first time I went through this one, right. So this, this is, this is, this is number three for it now, but um, the first time I went through it, I definitely got the, the, the butter of it, but it was like, yeah. a, um, like a pear poached in butter for me. There was yes. a little bit of like a, a light fruit to it. And the second time through, and you may not like this candy, but it came across as cowtails. I don't know if you've ever had a cowtail, <laughs> but, but, but without the chalky it. note of cowtails, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had that chalky yeah, yeah. note of it. The caramel, the cream, the, that, yes. that thing yes. was there. But no, no chalk to it. Cause I immediately, I was like, okay, this smells like a cow tail. But if somebody like washed off all the chalk, cause that's the part that makes cow tail hilarious. Suck, is the chalk part <laughs> for me. No, that's but it not was, an insult. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it, 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 cow tails are really divisive amongst candy nerds for sure. Like they're like, oh my God, these <laughs> things are awful. And it's one of those, I have a friend that'll send me, uh, you know, some samples from time to time and he'll usually stick some candy in the box because, you know, I'm going to get diabetes one way or the other, whether it's be the whiskey or the, <laughs> the candy that he sends to me. Um, and he stuck some of those in one time and I was like, Oh no, no, don't do it. Shit. I wish I had known I would have sent you some candy. <laughs> always, always candy is always a, a positive. So whenever you develop this one, and, I, and I'm going to ask the same question whenever we get to batch 10, um, when you develop this one, did you start with, let's develop for a good nose? Did you develop for a mouthfeel? Did you develop for a palate? Or did you target two of the three or all three or none of the above? Here's here's the, the cold, hard truth about Found North is we almost never focus on the nose. Um, mm -hmm. We want the nose to be good. Uh, the, the nose can't, we don't want the nose to be missing because it's like, um, 
if you write a good book, you don't want to have a shitty cover. Uh, but, but really, um, I, I, <laughs> I've always felt when I drink a whiskey, when I remember a whiskey, I rarely remember the nose. I almost never remember the nose. Actually, the impression that I have with the whiskey, um, the thing I care the most about always is the landing. Um, which is funny because everybody, I feel like the finish is a sexy thing to talk about, but like the thing that really gets you, whether you love a whiskey or not is once it hits your lips, like right, right when it, right. The entry, the landing, um, that's, that's the, the, that's, it has to have a good landing. Um, but from there, we almost always are, we're, we're thinking about the whiskey as a progression of time. Um, and this is a funny thing. I, I, I love writing tasting notes. Um, always loved it. You, you know, if you, the, the tasting notes on found North website, that's, that's, that's mostly my handiwork. Um, and it's just a fun, honestly, like it's a hobby of mine. If I didn't make whiskey, I probably would just write tasting notes for fun. Um, I, I really enjoy it, but I've always, I've always had a, a, a bit of a conflict, a, a bit of a love hate relationship with them because a whiskey is not a list of notes in the same way that a song is in a list of notes. Um, the right. way they're organized, the richness, the way the music's played, the way the, the way the music is played matters, right? Um, the, the, the organization of the flavors in a way where um, they evolve and they progress over time, um, that matters quite a bit to me. Uh, and that matters quite a bit to our team. And so when we think about the whiskey, we really think about it as having four quadrants. Um, the landing would be the first quadrant. Um, the, the palette, we sort of break into uh, two quadrants, the second and the third quadrant. Um, and then the finish is the fourth quadrant. And sometimes we, 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 don't, we don't say this usually on podcasts, but sometimes we talk about what we call the resolve, which is mm -hmm. like, you have the finish, you know how you have the finish and then you're like, oh, it's done. And then it, it almost like, this sounds kind of nasty, but like the, the, a secondary finish flavor almost refluxes back up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you get that. It's just, how does it, um, uh, uh, flash photography, right? Like you get flash photography and you have that, uh, that like after image that, that kind of just fades out of your vision. That's resolved. Mm -hmm. That that comes after the fourth quadrant. Um, so for us, we think of, we think about our whiskeys in four quadrants, and it really helps us structurally because, um, to be honest, like the tasting notes don't always matter that much. If if I if I taste, uh, you know, if if I taste vanilla and you taste, you know, uh, uh, more of like a coconut, it it, it matters. For us, maybe if one of us likes right. vanilla and one of us likes coconut, but really it's more about the, the the creamy note that that sort of that lovely note coming along at that point, and how does it balance with the rest of the notes? What it is to you and what it is to me. If I taste, you know, peaches and you taste plums, like who who cares? Um, so mm -hmm. what really is important is how do those how do those notes almost form chords, and how do those notes transition over the course of the of the palate and what's, what's really underappreciated about whiskey. And I guess, you know, you could talk about other categories of alcohol, but um, what's really <laughs> right. underrated about whiskey is it engages multiple senses. Um, you know, your sense of taste is really your sense of smell, your taste buds and your nociceptors and your, your sense of feeling. Um, and so what I really love about a good whiskey is, um, if a good whiskey has an evolving uh, uh, mouthfeel that that plays really nicely with an evolving palate, with an evolving flavor, uh, uh, you know, basically like I like when you get the, the kind of crackly grip at the same time that you get baking spices. Those things that that forms like a, almost like a, a flavor chord. Um, it's a crossover of multiple senses at the same time, having a really lovely impact. And you get kind of like, if you can get almost a, a brown sugar sweetness, uh, a crackling spice and, and like cinnamon up in your olfactory senses, I'm in heaven. Um, 
And so I like I like the 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 whiskey to express itself really well over time. And I don't like whiskey that's I say this all the time. I hate whiskey that's bimodal. I really don't like whiskey that presents one way and then has this weird pause and then presents it a completely different way. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so when we're when we're blending for for anything, we're almost always. We're 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 blending for a proper marriage of mouthfeel and flavor over time. Um, And and then we just make sure the nose isn't boring. You know, if the Mm -hmm. nose is just really flat and and not giving you anything, Mm -hmm. that's 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 a problem. But if the nose is like the nose can be simple and enticing as long as when it hits your lips, it it starts playing right. a fucking symphony. You know, like if the nose if the nose gives you a nice little soft introduction into what you're having, that's perfectly fine. They don't need to be you don't need to have this magical nose and 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 then not a great palate. You need the other way mm-hmm. around, if anything. Yeah, and I usually find there, there's there's two reason two reasons why I remember the nose. One of them is is good, and one of them's not bad. Um, and the first the first being, man, the nose is really good. And then whenever I drank the whiskey, it was not great, right? And, and, and if it stuck in my brain, like man, it just didn't translate. That's one that'll stick. And then the other one is, um, you know, you nose a thing, and you're like, okay, that smells all right. And then you taste it, and it's like, holy shit, what is this thing, right? Then you go back to it again, and you start kind of pulling it apart it's where it's almost like a mystery and i like that you mentioned resolve in here because i wrote these yesterday um the finish on this particular one on batch five um it finished for me and it wasn't nearly as sweet in the in the finish as maybe the initial palette was there's a lot more and you're the one that kind of brought this to my uh, attention is you know the the amount of mint that exists inside of weeders which is not a thing that was just in my brain up until I heard you mention that, but it was a little bit, not quite as sweet. And then I I, I wrote it down here and then there's like dot, 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 dot. Way after the finish, there was this like honey bun sprinkled with cinnamon that just kind of popped out of nowhere. And I was like, where the hell did this come from? And this happens rarely, but I was like, it was an enjoyable moment that I didn't expect. Like I had finished typing this and went on to do something else completely and had to come back. (laughs) Like what? second yeah, yeah th- it, this this was one that had that resolve for me right and 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 i appreciate that and uh, i asked, asked specifically about the nose because we'll talk about it again whenever we get to batch 10 so you know batch nine being explicitly corn and wheat only and and the barrels being slightly different um you know for your introduction as a weeder really really popular you've said a whole lot of people like it um you know, they say you can never go back home, right? Like that's the, that's the, <laughs> the saying at this point. Um, if you do something really, really well, you have to transition to do doing it else. even better if you're going to do it again, <laughs> yeah, right? And so yeah. l- l- let's hear about batch ten. Let's 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 move over towards this guy. Yeah. So batch ten was batch ten was fun because um, the first problem we had was we didn't have any more of that that wheat that made batch five. So. Mm-hmm. We made batch five, and um, the I think one of the really fun things was with with our early batches, you know, they they eventually sold out, but 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 bottles lingered in stores that you know tried taking us on, and they really didn't have the market for it, and and we would put there, we would publish on online that this that a store had it, and there was this inflection point at some point where. Um, I think it was really, frankly, it was really after batch six. It was like after batch six, shelves started getting cleared out of previous batches. Anything that was lingering around. And people used to email me. Ah, I just found a bottle of batch one in this store in, you know, wherever, wherever. And that was always fun. I get like a picture of somebody being so excited that they, they scored an old batch. Uh, and the one I started getting a ton of emails about was batch five. Was but Because I think just... A lot of times it was sitting batch. You, you just imagine it, right? Batch five is sitting there. It says eight year. You've never heard of Found North. It's sitting there on the shelf, mm-hmm. and it's I uh, got a you know it's a one twenty nine ninety nine price point or whatever the hell it was. And right next to it is batch six, and it's a seventeen year, and it's one forty four ninety nine or whatever. You can just imagine right. someone being like, 
yeah, no brainer. It's, it's a no yeah, brainer. Yeah, it's like it's no brainer. And six was really six was really good, you know. So people, mm -hmm. and what ended up happening was people would, would would go back and find five, and I would get these emails where people would be like, I bought one bottle of batch five because I had heard of you guys and I liked you guys, and I I waited and I drank it. And now I went back and it's gone and I'm really mm -hmm. upset because there were three bottles on the shelf and now they're all gone and I can't, I can't get it. Are you going to make another weeder? You know, and it was like, there was just so much of this. Are you going to make another weeder? And we wanted to, um, but we didn't have the, the, we didn't have the wheat we needed. And we started buying wheat that, that was pretty good, but, um, didn't have enough new wood on it. And so we were re-racking re stuff into new wood um, and waiting and, and, and constantly, like every time we release a batch, we get samples in of all our different lots. And so we would get samples in of the wheat wherever it was, and we would play around with it. And we were just like, this, we're just going to make a shadow of batch five with this, you know, it's just not ready and it's not ready. It's not ready. It's not ready. Um, and when we when we sat down to make batch ten, we had we had bought this uh, malted barley, really without knowing how we were going to use it. We just really liked it, and and it was like this is a delicious whiskey. Like mm -hmm. this is really just a delicious whiskey, and we're gonna we'll just sit on it and we'll just figure out what we're gonna do with it. Um, and we were we were working on the we were working on the wheat, and the wheat after almost two years of of aging in new wood was starting to have a lot of the quality of um of the wheat that 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 we used in batch five um and the dynamics of of kind of the different corn components because this the, the corn component the corn base that we did for this was we used two separate 23 year corns one that was aged in new american oak one that was aged in in ex bourbon the new american oak one was in there for for a long transferred in there and now i can't remember exactly how long for a long time in new wood and then we used a 19 year that was also in um that had also been transferred into new american oak so we had a much more dynamic corn base actually than we had with batch five and it was doing wonderful things and the wheat was was starting to to carry its you know carry its own in the in the blend um but it just wasn't it just wasn't better than batch five. And, and we were kind of like, well, if it's not better, it's not ready. And I can't remember which one of us was like, Hey, what if we just use some of that malted barley, just a small amount, just what, what happens if we use a little bit of this malted barley? Um, and it's fun to have five and 10 next to each other because malted barley does things from a flavor standpoint that I think are really great. But, but, but honestly, malted barley and new American Oak, does stuff from a textural standpoint that, and from a, um, like a richness standpoint. And, and I think people often, when they, when they say rich, um, they, I think they mean it more, um, they mean it more like decadent, right. you know, like it's got a, a decadence to it. Mm -hmm. That's not what I mean. When I mean rich, I'm talking about the dynamics of the whiskey. I'm talking about if, if I'm talking about accent notes, right? Like, if you if you play the guitar, you can you can strum a chord and you can strum a chord like there's a real mm -hmm. difference between the depth of the sound. Well, the same is true for flavor. And I think that's just a it's just a thing in whiskey that I wish we would get more into is like it's not just what the note was. It's mm -hmm. how resonant is that note? How deep is that note? Um and, and not just from a flavor standpoint, I mean, from a textural standpoint, the, the, a whiskey can be chewy or a whiskey can, can like literally get into the pores of your palate. Um, and that's what malted barley does. And that's actually why it's such a, it was, that's what was so game changing about making batch 10. And when you drink five, there's the flavor palette's great and the texture's great and you think the texture's really good. And then you have 10 next to it and you're like, mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> right. This, this has a, this has a grip to it. This has a grip to the palette that is fundamentally different from batch five. Um, and so this, this nine year old malted barley, I mean, we only ended up making up 5% of the blend. We didn't need that much of it to, to, mm -hmm. um, 
fundamentally changed the whiskey, which of course is ironic to me because, you know, bourbon's always using 5% malted barley. Uh, right. And they'll tell you it's for the enzyme count, but I'm going to tell you right now, there aren't enough enzymes in 5% barley to convert your starches to sugars. Like you're adding enzymes if it's at 5% yep. uh, or you're not getting a good yield. Um, mm -hmm. So really they're, they're a big reason why they're doing this is they're either doing it because they want flavor consistency and they don't know what the importance of the barley is, or they're doing it from a flavors consistency standpoint and they know how important the right. malted barley was. And I always, as a flippant young asshole thought that the malted barley in bourbon was kind of a throwaway. It was like, well, mm -hmm. we got to, we got to hold up airs that were not adding enzymes. So we just throw it in there, but we don't actually need it. But in reality, like, man, it adds this grip to the whiskey that is just awesome. And that, that was when we decided, okay, we're ready to release batch. Like we are totally ready to release batch 10 or, or the next weed or the next iteration of the weeder. Yeah. And you know, I, you, you thought that because that's what they told you, right? That this is, this is a hundred <laughs> yeah. percent what, what bourbon yeah. distilleries have been saying for a long time, you know, and part of me wonders if it's, you know, just not wanting to give any credit to malted barley, you know, but yeah. we, have, yep. we have some, some peers on the other side of the world that, that think that their stuff's to, yeah. better than what we make. And so yep. you don't want to give it any credit or whatever. Um, now, kind of going back to it, you know, you, you already said you don't really develop a, a, a profile for the nose. Um, and I had this question before you just said what you were said. Um, it felt like with this blend, the nose didn't, the nose was a thing that I smelled. And I was like, okay. And then whenever I got into tasting it, I had to go back and start picking things out. It was less, yeah. um, less kind of in my face, but the mouth feel of this one, the journey that it takes from the first time you smell it all the way to the end and then going back to it again was more, it was more of a journey, right? Where the, yeah. the other one might've been a short story. This might be a novella or, you know, whatever it, <laughs> it, um, it had more heft to it from end to end is, is how it kind of came across to me. Um, that's hundred percent. Right. I think that's, I mean, if, if you wanted to, we can doll up how to, how we talk about it and we can, you know, mm -hmm. uh, wax rhapsodic and all that. But I think you just nailed it in, in the simplest one sentence. From start to finish, batch 10 has a lot more heft than batch five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it, it's a journey. It's it's for sure a journey. You know, it it was a little off sweet on the nose for me, you know, a couple of the times. And there may be some, you know, burnt orange peel or mm. I, and I kept getting this like not in a bad way, but a musty note to it. And when I say musty, I don't mean like basement musty. I mean like Rick House musty, right? Yeah. Those are different yeah, yeah. musts that, that exist and not like great <laughs> musty either, which is a wine thing. Um, but it didn't feel as sweet as what it tasted like as soon as I got it, right? It, and I smelt it and I was like, oh, there could be some of these things here. And then when I tasted it, I was like, okay, here's a cinnamon rock candy in your mouth, right? Yeah. Just go ahead and just crush it up and maybe throw some pop rocks in there to get some <laughs> effervescence to it. And you're good to go, right? Like this is, this is where it's hitting you. Um, but there's also some smoke in here, or at least totally. for me, there is. Do you think this is, who did this? Is this, is this wheat or is this malted barley that brought the smoke in? Or is it the fact that it's older corn, right? Like where did that come from? I think that the, the little bit of, um, that little bit of like, uh, uh, old library book must that, that kind mm -hmm. of, that, 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 um, I don't know. I, I, I've had the, the, the rare pleasure to eat, to, 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 to eat into the remaining supplies of some of the, like, um, the old dusties. And, and I won't, I, I don't want to, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to compare our whiskey to whiskeys that are absolutely legendary that I really love. Cause that sounds mm -hmm. super arrogant, but, but there's a quality of that, that, um, dusty Rick house kind of old leather library book, um, uh, uh, quality that I really like that's in some of those, those old dusty bottlings. Um, and I feel like that comes from, honestly, I feel like that comes from the old corn, that little hint of, um, uh, burnt orange peel, uh, zesty kind of, uh, smoke note that you're talking about is a hundred percent, a hundred percent from the barley. That's from the barley. There's no question. Um, and, and it started popping up when we started mixing the barley in. I can actually see, I, I, I wish I had it right now, the, the basically, as we go through and 
the, the way we blend is we, we create a formula and then we name the formula. Um, otherwise, it's really hard when you're working on multiple formulas asynchronously. If you don't name the formula something, you're like, OK, yeah, the one that's, you know, 50 percent this, 40 percent, right? It just gets so yeah. arduous. So we always come up with some goofy ass nickname for each formula and then we call it, you know, um bulldog prime bulldog one whatever the hell is the, right. the flavor of the day you know um i think sammy called uh i think sammy called hell diver the final hell diver formula that we worked on i think was was pequod like the the um from um the i'm i'm, I'm baby brain right now from the, the famous novel um mm -hmm. and anyway so if you look through it, you can see as our uh, as we're describing the flavor before and after the barley, all of a sudden you start getting this kind of zesty um, uh, orange smoky note that was in there. And and almost a um, God, I'm about to sound so stupid, but like a maltiness to it, uh, uh, a um, yeah. and, and almost like a semi sweet chocolate quality that if you walk around in Scotland in the Highlands near a distillery and you smell just the, the, the malt um, fermenting in the, in the, in the uh, uh, distilleries, you'll, you'll smell it on the wind that, that's in here. It, it's right. It's unquestionably in here. I think the wheat is bringing, I think the wheat combined with the barley and combined with the corn is what's giving you the, the sort of, the rock candy sweetness mixed with almost a lovely little sticky caramel toffee note. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's where the wheat is shining through. Yeah. I got on one of the tastings, I got a spicy maple candy as the, as, yes. as the kind of through note on that. There's, there's a lot of them and I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'll put out a short video tomorrow on social media that'll have the three rounds of tasting notes that I did with, with batch 10 uh, because I didn't get batch five done. Cause I can, I mean, I got these yesterday and so I, I drank no, it sorry. and then waited a little while and drank it. No, no, no. It's, it's perfectly fine, but I'm trying to get it out before your lottery it. closes. Right, so, right. More people so people can... are like, oh, wait a second. I just yeah, so the lottery. So they got a shot that. at it. But one of the things that I really, really appreciate in good whiskeys, and this uh, maybe not a lot of people like this, but there's like a, 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 a tea finish note. And, and I don't mean tea mm. in the fact that it tastes like tea, but like that that flavor that re resides in your mouth after you've drank tea that kind of uh, it's it's not quite bitter but it's sort of in that bitter realm right it's a it's a little bit of like a sweet herbal bitterness result in the resolve yes i know absolutely, exactly what you're talking absolutely, about yeah. yeah and that's why like the 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 last time that i drank this and and wrote down my notes you know i, I felt like there was like that 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 bitterness but then it went into like a savory then sweet then back into slightly bitter and it just like this this finish went on a really really solid solid journey that um, I was like, okay, I get why this is for sure better than batch five and batch five is a phenomenal whiskey to begin with. And honestly, as a person who's drank a whole lot of bourbon in the last 30 days, this is a really nice difference, right? <laughs> it, 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 for a, for a bourbon fan, you can enjoy this, but this is yeah. not bourbon in the I, best possible way. I, I think you just, I think you just basically like, um, can I, can I, yeah, can we quote you on that on the website? It's like, absolutely. As a, as a bourbon fan, you like this, but this is not bourbon. Um, that's yeah. basically, uh, it's, a, it's a funny way to think about Found North, but we're a bunch of American guys making Canadian whiskey, you know? And it's mm -hmm. like, what'd you, what'd you expect us to make? Um, we're basically, I, I uh, the, the way my, my brother puts it that I really like is, is, um, in, in, exploring what we can do with Canadian whiskey, we um, often find, find ourselves sort of adjacent to bourbon flavors, um, mm -hmm. but kind of outside of their, the, the bourbon sandbox, you know, it's like we, we end up sort of outside of the, 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 the container that is bourbon, but it's something that's adjacent from a flavor standpoint. And so it's, it's, it's quite um, familiar to, American whiskey drinker palettes, which mm -hmm. that's what we have um, as American right. whiskey drinkers. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I mean, I, I, honestly, I don't, I don't know that there's too many different 
um, especially with this particular blend, right? You, you bring in the malted barley, and so you start getting some nuances that even international drinkers might be used to um, because there are, they are used to, while it may be a lower proof alcohol, having an incredibly robust mouthfeel to a scotch that's at 80 proof, right? We, yes. we always associate you know a higher alcohol content with more mouthfeel, and it doesn't really work that way, but it doesn't. malted barley has this thing, right? It has this thing that allows this silkiness, this this you know whatever it is but i'll also say um, i do enjoy your notes I, I have a new word now ebulence right this is this is the <laughs> word that i that i have to uh, incorporate in and my coworkers love it when i bring new words into play and they're like all right you just shut the hell up but ebulence is in there now right this, this is one that's in there this is something that you put on there it makes complete sense with what you've got so give me some specifics on uh, you know the lottery opening for being able to try to get in and get this ends tomorrow i think at midnight is that right yeah so tomorrow's okay. thursday so when you release this yep. people will be it'll be day of so if you're <laughs> if you're listening to me tomorrow now uh <laughs> look, look, maybe that's fair on october the third right yeah. so instead of like I'm, tomorrow I'm, october the third referring to myself in the fourth person um yeah. right <laughs> uh yeah no so tomorrow today uh, when you're when you're listening to this, um, the the lottery ends uh, at on Thursday at midnight. Um, uh, but it doesn't matter if you if you get in before midnight, you got in before midnight, and mm -hmm. and you're good. And um, we'll basically we'll run the lottery. We'll weed out basically any um, bad actors. Um, we've already been seeing the um, we get kind of like live data of the bots. Mm -hmm. They keep getting weeded out, which is really, really satisfying. Um, so, so it's nice to uh, it's nice to see those those weeded out. Um, we'll run the we'll run the lottery, um, and then the winners. The the way it works is they ask you for your billing information, and if you enter the lottery, you're charged, and you're basically by entering, you're committing to buying it. If you win, um, if you don't win, you're not charged anything, and you're not committed to spending anything. There's you know whatever, um, but uh, we have a couple really sweet whiskeys. I don't mean sweet as in uh, 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 like candy sweet. I mean, well, actually, the next release has some sweetness to it. I, I will tease that. And it is an absolute banger. I am super excited about it. We've, we're just finishing up production on the next release. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you, uh, if you don't win batch 10, um, it actually if you enter for the next lottery, your chances are automatically doubled. If by some chance you don't win that one, your chances are doubled again yeah. um, and, and so on and so forth. So, so yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, uh, and, and some people may understand this, but there's like this preference point system that exists for big game hunters that go out West and they want to hunt an elk or whatever. If you don't get drawn this year, you get more points for next year or, yeah. You know, Sazerac does this with their barrel selects now where, you know, if you go through the drawing and you don't get picked to do a single barrel selection for them, you get more points for the next time around and you get more opportunities for it. And so it's an incredibly fair way to do this. So it behooves people, even if you think you don't have a chance of getting this one, it just puts you that much further ahead in the next go round. Now, obviously, you'll have to enroll in that lottery as well to be able to continue <laughs> to get your points, right? Um, it's not like a, once you're in, you're always in. This isn't the mafia. It's, it's But you it's don't lose it. So... So to be clear, if you if you do batch ten lottery and you don't get it and you see the next whiskey and you're like, I don't want this one, mm -hmm. you don't go back down to zero. If right. you then enter right. the subsequent lottery, you're you're still you get to keep you're it. still at double double your your chances double every time, no matter whether you skip mm -hmm. a lottery or not, until you win one and then you're then then you're back to square one. Sorry. Yeah, there, no, I mean, there's no reason to skip a lottery. Obviously, <laughs> like you should just stay in, you know, always. You, so that, that's that's how you eventually win. Um, is there any stipulation where if you get drawn for this one, like you start at one again with the next one or you can't be yes. drawn for the next one? Or? No, you're, 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 you still can be drawn for the next one. You just, you start at square one. Um, and gotcha. so it's basically, you're just effectively, you have one entry the first time you enter. If you don't win, you have two entries. The next time you enter, if you don't, if you hadn't won on that, you get to four and then you win on that one. One of your four entries is selected. The next time you enter, you're back at one, two, so on and so forth. I don't know if we'll come up with some. Um, I don't know if we'll come up with with sort of more nuance to that. Um, equal allows for like an incredible amount of nuance if we if we want to. Um, I, I you know we'll we'll 
we hear people's feedback. It's always one of the funniest things is like, um, I, I respond to a, like, I don't know, 30% of our customer emails. And, and I always, I, you know, I sign off, you know, Nick and every once in a while, someone's like, aren't you the head blender? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, there are six of us on this team. Like, mm-hmm. what, you know, it's not a big odds team. are you're going to get one of you're us. You're going to get one of us. Um, so, uh, no, but my point is that like, there isn't some huge distance between, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like we have some team of people who's responding and the rest of us decision makers never hear the feedback. Um, everybody who's responding to you is a decision mm-hmm. maker. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's nice. It's actually really nice. I, I, I can't begin to tell you how much fun it is to get emails from people since we launched this of people just being like, I might not win, but I just want you to know, like, we really appreciate that you did a, did a lottery. This feels like, feels like a great mm-hmm. fair way to do it. Uh, that being said, I also get the, the email where someone's like, you want my personal information? Shame on you. You know, it's like, okay, well, <laughs> you were going mean, to give it to me when you bought the bottle, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say like, well, at that point, like they probably typed that email from their iPhone. Uh, which is listening to them a hundred percent of the time and likely sharing some of that information with uh, whether it be That's Google or someone else, right? Like, do you really think you're that private as you drive around no. town with the traffic cameras that are pointed at your face on a regular? I know like, exactly. Listen, no, listen. I, I, I hate giving my personal information out. It's not, but but it it is it is funny because we we hear right. the good and the bad feedback. So if we get bad mm-hmm. feedback, we respond to it. We try to make the process better, and and we'll see yeah. what we can do going forward. Yeah, I can imagine they're they're like, oh, they want this so they can generate marketing emails. And, you know, it's a pretty easy response. You don't have to generate marketing emails because you have to have a lottery to sell your stuff anyways, right? Like if you weren't able to sell through it, then you might need marketing emails, but you don't need that right now. Oh, man. Do you want to guess how much money we've spent uh, total on marketing? Uh, Not including not including T&E for like going to going to events in in different markets. Well, I mean, you, you can always count the website, right? And then the hours oh, you that you are right tasting notes, right? right? Like uh, you can yeah. you can generate one, but... Uh, Let me say this, paid ads. Paid ads. Right. How many paid ads do you think none. we've done? <laughs> I would imagine <laughs> none at this point, right? Yeah. No. Uh, I, and I, you know, honestly, if you don't have to advertise it and you're selling out, that means that you're making a fantastic product. And you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple minutes... Um, to, to, you know, anything else that you want to talk about, we'll talk about, but, um, I do want to, to start to wrap this up because I'm also going to try to get this cut up and edited and posted it. tonight. Yeah. So we have at least maybe 24 hours of people being able to access the information and say, Hey, I should go get this while hopefully having a tasting video up in the morning, because I think yeah. that it is a worthwhile endeavor for folks to be a part of this. No, I really appreciate that. I, I here's what I'll say to, to sort of wrap it up. And I was joking a little bit about the marketing thing. We, we haven't, spent any money on on paid ads and um that's great but but the the funny thing about the the really funny thing about having a startup and running a a small team and we were effectively self-funded um when we launched this business so it's not like we're it's not like we're rolling in in a big budget to hire a lot of people and hire agencies and hire consultants. We we can't really do any right. of that stuff. Um, and uh, and the reality is that like as a company, our biggest asset is actually our time. Um, it's our time. It's our energy, right? And um, and we we have a, a very finite amount of of money to spend to, to build the brand. Um, most of, most of actually the design work for the bottle and everything is done in house by one of the guys on our blending team. Um, yeah. you know, like we, we really, uh, we really kind of, um, concentrate the hell out of all of our resources into making the whiskey as good as it, it can be. And I know that's like, that's a little bit cliche, but the point I want to make is, um, we've been talking this whole time about batch five to batch 10. And maybe if, you know, we, I think of found North as like, Oh, we're, we're growing so fast because Mm -hmm. we used to only sell a thousand bottles and now we can sell 5,000 bottles. And that is Mm -hmm. a big difference, but it's still, we're still like a a small budding brand that, that the greater whiskey, you know, consumer base has never heard of. Um, 
So if you haven't heard of us, and this is the first time you've heard of us and and uh, and you're looking at it and you're like, oh, shit, batch 10. I missed the first nine batches. Trust me when I say you're not late to the game. Um, right. I, I really feel like I really feel like we've started to hit our stride. And I don't mean that to dis- disparage previous whiskeys we made. I love so many of the previous. I love all the previous whiskeys we make. They're like. I have a child now, so I'm not going to say they're like my children, but like, right. shh, they're like my children. Um, <laughs> I, I love the whiskeys we've made. I really do. Um, but I think we're getting like, we're getting sub- substantially better at making whiskey. We have more resources to do it now. Um, and we own more and more parts of the process. We used to just buy exactly the whiskey that we needed to make our blends. That's how we started. Um, Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough capital to launch. Um, and it was basically like, here's what we need. We didn't age it any longer. We didn't do anything to it. We just bought it. We blended it and bottled it. And it was out the door. Um, and now we like, when we recast something into anything, into any different type of cask, um, no, no joke, for one of the next high altitude releases, when I went to go look when we bought the barrels for the for the release legitimately i flew down to um the barrel broker and nosed every and inspected every single barrel we were purchasing and they were like what are you doing and i was like look man this is what we spend our time money and effort on Mm -hmm. is just trying to make the whiskey as good as we can and we have more resources to do that and we have more expertise now and so i just feel like we're I feel like we're just hitting our prime um, <laughs> in, in terms of making our best whiskey. So um, I, 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 I hope uh, folks will, well, actually I, I've seen the numbers we're, we're, we have tons and tons of people who want batch 10 and that's really exciting. I hope if you're new to found North that you'll take the leap of faith and, and, uh, and, and join the lottery or wait for the next one and see if, if that one, uh, see if that one gets you because, I think we're starting to make our best whiskey, which is really exciting. Yeah, and I, I'll say that you know I've, I've I've had the opportunity to taste through um, five different batches over the course of you know the different times we've talked. The first time we had Peregrine and two other batches, and I can't remember what they were off the top of my head. Um, now I've had these two batches, and uh, I would agree, you know, like batch five is really really good, and so saying batch ten is even better is not disparaging to it. Like hopefully you do get better over time, right? As you <laughs> sort of exercise it. the blending muscle, you you. You, you should get better. I know if you ever get to the point to where like, this is as good as I can ever do. And maybe it's time to find somebody else. Retire. to kind of do a blend or two, right? like, <laughs> and, and maybe you do hit that point at some point, but it, it doesn't feel that way. You know, there's, there's a, there's a solid growth here. You're able to source, uh, you know, better things, more things. You're able to grow the brand in an appropriate fashion. And, and honestly, it, it, the proof comes through in the passion that you guys have for what you do. At the end of the day, you're connected with the category well before you're um, building the brand, right? Like this is a yeah. part of, of of something that you've always enjoyed. And so you're going to probably treat it a little bit more precious than, you know, somebody who's coming in just to build a brand and make a few dollars, right? This is a, a both passion project and a personal thing and a business at the same time. So um, you guys are doing phenomenal things. I'm always, like I said, if I had two more hours, we would talk for two more hours, probably, right? Uh, but also, your wife would hate me even more because know. you know then then you're having to 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 leave her with your <laughs> with newborn even old. longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Nick, thank you for your time. I'm always always appreciative of it. Um, it's the thing that you can never make more of. Then you even said it a minute ago. It's the most valuable <laughs> thing that you have. So, um, thanks. thanks for for letting me have a little bit of it today. No, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in to this episode from the Embellished Pod. Uh, If you enjoyed this, please leave me a review on whatever platform you're consuming this on. Leave a comment if possible. Hit me up on social media on TikTok or Instagram using Embellished Pod and give me a follow so you can keep up with what's going on here. I can be found at www.embellishedpod.com with all of my links, accounts, and contact details. Thanks for stopping by. (laughs) 